this tutorial, I'm going to run through the techniques used in this hat. It is a slouchy, double thick cuff hat, and it's a free pattern. And I designed this um, to kind of give away as a Christmas holiday present to my audience as a thank you from Very Pink. And I was going to put it out right before Christmas, and then I thought, well, wait a minute. There are people out there who might actually want to knit this as a Christmas present. So I decided to give you your Christmas present early, so you have a few weeks before Christmas, so you can knit this up if you like. If you'd like to get your copy, the, your, your free copy of the pattern to follow along, just click the little I in the upper right-hand corner. I have a video out, I put out a couple of months ago, I guess, a few months ago, on the double thick hat cuff. And I put that together as a, um, like you, you can substitute a regular hat cuff for this double thick hat cuff. And so I decided, people really like that video, so I decided to like take that idea and actually put it in a slouchy hat with a palm. This uses DK or worsted weight yarn. I'm gonna show you the difference in the two of those. And it has two sizes, small, medium, medium, large. But because there is no cast on row and the ribbing is really stretchy, both sizes actually fit me, so I wouldn't get too worked up over the size that you're knitting. If you're knitting for a guy, definitely go with the bigger one. If you're knitting for a teenager, definitely go with the smaller one. But those of us with just like women with normal size heads, you can wear either size probably. There's, there's enough of a difference between them that it's worth having two sizes, but because there's no uh, stiff cast on edge, um, either size is fine for most heads. So the double thick hat cuff is just what it sounds like and there is no cast on edge. We're going to use a provisional cast on and then flip everything kind of on itself. You'll see here in a minute because we're going to go through all the steps for it. But it's especially good if you have someone or yourself, if you are sensitive to a cast on edge against your forehead and it's making my forehead, it's just thinking about that. Um, it's soft. It's also soft enough that it's not going to really destroy your hair. If you like have your hairstyle and you have products in your hair, it's a loose enough fit that it's not going to do that. We're going to go through the cuff, the knitting, attaching the pom-pom, click the little I for your free pattern. I also will have all the materials listed out on my website as well. And then the next section, we're getting started with the provisional cast on. We are ready to get started on this hat. And um, first I wanna show you what the hat looks like when it's finished. We're using a provisional cast on, which is a lot of what this tutorial is, is getting make, doing the provisional cast on. So there's no stiff cast on edge. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here is a finished hat, just like I said, super stretchy cuff and double thick. And here we have the decreases. I love pretty decreases in a hat, so I designed these with kind of a star pattern, starfish almost. And when I knit this, I used Knit Picks Capra yarn, which is a cashmere blend. It's soft, it feels great, and it's inexpensive. Um, it's a DK weight yarn. And I thought, you know, this yarn kind of knits up like worsted. So I knit this one in worsted weight yarn, and I'll tell you, it, it's fine, it's a warm hat. The, you, so you can use worsted in this pattern. You'll need like 50 grams for the cuff, 50 grams for the rest of the hat. Same with the DK weight yarn. The difference is this is, the DK weight is a prettier, slouchier hat. This one's warm, great, no problem. It just isn't as, as drapey. The drape on the yarn isn't as nice because it's a bit thicker. But either will work if you're working from leftovers in, your, in the, the yarn that you have at home. Uh, either will work, but this is this is definitely the nicer hat. Um, I don't know, it's my opinion, I guess. We are going to get started with the provisional cast on, and that will allow us to um, cast on stitches, and then with using scrap yarn, then we re we uh, remove the scrap yarn, so we have live stitches there. That's how we avoid the cast on edge. So I'm going to use scrap yarn for this in a contrasting color to my working yarn. I'm going to tie a knot in this so I can distinguish the slip knot end from the other end. And then make a slip knot. You don't really have to know how to crochet for this. Um, we're just going to use the crochet hook to get the loops on. I'm going to crochet chain a few stitches and then bring my knitting needle into it and hold the knitting needle on the working yarn. Reach the crochet hook over grab that yarn and pull it through, 
Then move the working yarn to the back, reach the crochet hook over, grab the yarn and pull it through, pull the working yarn to the back, You'll do this, depending on the size you're knitting, either 104 or 116 times. And then when you um, get the right number, you want to chain a few stitches, then cut the yarn. I'll just go ahead and do this for you. Cut the yarn and pull that end through the last loop and tighten it a little bit. Don't crazy tighten it because we want to get it undone again at some point. <laughs> so that's how you do the provisional cast on. And then on the next row, we bring in our working yarn, the color that we're using for the cuff. And what I've done here is I started at the slip knot end. So I find my knot, I start the slip knot end and just knit all the stitches. That's where I am right now on my 16 inch circulars. And I want to straighten everything out because I don't want it twisted when I join in the round. So I'm being careful about this. And I can see purple stitches facing up all the way around. My working yarn is here. My first stitch is here. I've got a little stitch marker that I'm going to pop on the right needle. And now I'm going to start my ribbing pattern. So it's knit two. I just loosened up that first stitch. I'm going to tighten it up with the tail. Then yarn forward to purl two. Then yarn back to knit two. Yarn forward to purl two. And there's an extra little motion that I do that I want to explain to you. I knit two. I yarn forward to purl two. I purl one. Then I yarn back and tighten that stitch up. Yarn forward to purl the second one. It picks up the slack between the knit and the purl stitch and it makes my ribbing look a lot better. I purl one, yarn back, tighten that up. You see how much slack I picked up on that stitch? So you'll keep working this ribbing around and around for four and a half inches which is enough, gives you a hat that looks like this, right? You can do it longer if you like, but it's a nice, a nice length, I think. And you will end up with something that looks like this. And we are ready to take out the provisional cast on and fold the whole thing together to make our double thick hat. So starting from, whoops, I need to do this. Starting from the non-slip knot end of the hat, you want to undo the pull out the end from the crochet chain and then we want to pick up all these stitches that are being held on this provisional cast on so the provisional cast on is this yellow color my real yarn color is this gray <clears throat> the first stitch is always wonky the yarn goes through it i'm going to put my needle in there and pull this out need something pointy. Somebody please find me something pointy on this table. Oh, maybe a knitting needle. Okay, the first stitch is always wonky. The yarn goes through it. You just figure it out, get it out of there. Okay, <clears throat> here's what we're looking for now. Just under the provisional cast on yarn, you'll see a V that is in the, the cuff color. You want to go under the right leg of the V and then pop that stitch out. And then go under the right leg of the V and pop that stitch out. And you want to do this all the way around. But I'll tell you what's exciting for me is to try to do a whole bunch at once. Sometimes you can't see them well enough to do this, but I like to do a whole bunch at once and then rip out a whole bunch at once. See how exciting that was? Whoops, I went one too far. So you'll do this all the way around 
picking up all the stitches so they're live again. And oh, I should mention, you don't have to use the same size needle. You can use a needle size smaller, you can use 24 inch. I don't expect everyone to have a bunch of US size six, 16 inch circular needles. So you can use small, just get those stitches on there on a smaller needle or the same size, and it, do, it can be on 24 inch circulars. Once you get all those picked up, you want to turn this inside out, not inside out, just fold it in half to make your double thick cuff. And we are going to knit two together from one needle to the other to kind of seam together this, um, this hat. And this is what you get. And on this one you see I put the provisional cast on stitches on a 24 inch circular, but that's fine because I'm only using one needle from this. And here's what I'm doing. I have these needles lined up and I don't think I mentioned these, this um, sample and this sample is, are um, samples from the double cuff video that I put out a while ago. I'm getting double duty use out of these samples. I think it's pretty exciting. People ask me all the time what I do with the samples. Put my needle into the front stitch, into the first stitch on the back needle, wrap the yarn and then pull it through both and pull those stitches off. Front, back, Wrap the needle, pull through both. So we're seaming and doing a knit round at the same time. And what's going to happen here is we'll just have um, the same number of stitches, you know, reduced from, from kind of double the number of stitches, half on one needle, half on the other. And I'm reusing this sample, right, from another tutorial. In the pattern that um, for this hat, I actually have you putting these, seaming these together. This round is done in your second color. You actually switch to the second color to do that. I mean, you don't have to. You can knit the hat in a solid color, of course, just to be clear. Okay, let me see what else we have in this section. Whoops. Let me see what else we have in this section. Um, Nope, that is it for this section. You're going to finish joining all the way around and then knit the length of the hat. I think it ends up being the whole piece is seven inches long. You can make it longer for a slouchier hat if you like. And then we're going to start the decreases, which we'll cover next. Okay, in this last section, I'm going to show you, we're going to talk about the decreases on the top. I'm going to show you how to switch from circular needles to double pointed needles. And we're going to talk about attaching the palms. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here's another hat that I did in the Capra yarn. This yarn was actually really on sale. So <laughs> I was uh, going in to um, do another one, you know, other than this pink and purple hat. And I picked these two colors just because I think the yarn was like half price. So it's a really inexpensive hat. And here is the faux fur palm I picked for this one. Isn't that pretty? I love the way those go together. And I'll give you links to um, where I get my faux fur palms on Etsy if you'd like to get some. Sure make a difference on how cute the hats are. So here we are. I've already started decreasing. You can see the line of decreases I have here. You just want to follow the pattern. And if you're using 16 inch circulars, you can get around pretty far. I've um, I've knit the decreases as far as I can. I need to switch d two double pointed needles because my, see here, my stitches are really stretched on these needles now. And if I was using Magic Loop, I could avoid switching to DPNs. I personally just think DPNs are easier. So when we start the decreases, I have you knitting around where you place the markers and it tells you, the pattern tells you exactly where to do that for the size you're knitting. And then there's one setup round. And then beyond that, you start knitting and then you work, um, well, you actually start knitting here. You work a SSK, a slip slip knit decrease. You work to two stitches before the marker, knit two together, SSK, knit two together, SSK. It's just the same thing around and around. And that's what gives us these lines of decreases. So on this one, what I want to show you is switching to double pointed needles. That's the main point of this, this section here. 
I've put a clippy marker in at the beginning of my round, and I did that a while ago because with all these stitch markers, I wanted to be clear about which marker was the beginning of my round. So I have this stitch marker here. I can actually move it up a little bit so I can see it better. And every other round is a decrease round. I start with slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, put the needle into those two stitches, wrap it and pull it through, and then I knit to two stitches before the end of the round. And I knit two together. I'm going to leave that stitch marker in place. And SSK. And if you need a review of the SSK or the knit two together, go ahead and click the little I in the upper right hand corner. And I'll take you to my videos for those. Knit two together. I'm going to take out that stitch marker. Because I have five sections here, I'm going to put two sections on one needle, two sections on the other knee on the second needle, and then one section on the third needle. SSK. I love using double pointed needles. I get so many messages from people who want me to explain to them how they can avoid using double pointed needles their whole life. And I kind of don't get it because I love working with little short needles. I always tell people, give it a try. I think they maybe have one bad experience and then they decide they didn't like it because it was hard to do on that first time. This is actually easy double pointed needle knitting because we're not starting from the cast on. I'm just picking up from the hat. And then the last section I'm going to put on this needle. Okay. And then from here, you can just work around and around on the double pointed needles. Split this stitch. And the DPNs will let you get down to very, very few stitches. You mean you can get down to three stitches on these. Um, you're not restricted by a cord length. And that is how we switch to double pointed needles. You just, um, here's my working yarn. And my next stitch is always to the left of my working yarn. Start with an empty DPN in my right hand and just work across. Just keep rotating, working around. Okay, let's talk about the palms. Okay, here is my hat. And here's the palm I'm using on this hat. What we need to attach this, and this is, I have a video on this specifically. Um, I came up with this method because just weaving in the ends on a pom-pom, you know, like poking it through and weaving it in, is not secure enough, especially for a kid's hat or something. So um, this, is, this is what I came up with. You need a big button. You need your faux fur palm with some strings sticking out of it. You only need two strings sticking out of it. Um, and a tapestry needle. And I'm going to thread all of these cords through my big tapestry needle. And yeah, the palms that I get have four threads. It, I, it isn't necessary to have four, you just need two, but we'll make use of all four. I'm gonna poke my tapestry needle through the tippy top of the hat and pull it through on the inside. And then separate those cords half and half. I'm gonna thread two of those cords and put them through the button. Thread the other half and put it through the hole on the opposite side. And that gives us something like a base to really tighten this pom-pom around. And you can tie a tight knot. I always tie a bow because at some point you're going to want to wash the hat without the palm. You can take the palm off and wash the hat. And I'll tell you what, especially on a slouchy hat, that's never even gonna to touch anyone's head and that knot's not going anywhere, that's safe. 
and it is secure. Even on a kid's hat, that's really secure. Okay, those are all of the techniques used in your Christmas holiday present hat pattern tutorial. I hope you enjoy the pattern. I'll be looking forward to seeing your finished, finished items on Instagram, seeing what you're doing with colors and everything else. I'll bet there'll be some stripes, things. I can't wait. Anyway, happy holidays. Good luck.